avoid these common pitfalls and stick around and I'll share the five beginner mistakes on the solo stove. Hey, I'm Scott from Bartlow's Barbecue. Thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in solo stove videos and recipes and ideas, check out the solo stove starting here, playlist and all the things there. If there's something you don't see, you wanna see, put it in the comments and I would love to put a video together for you or answer any questions. You can always DM me or message me on Instagram or different platforms, that's usually the easiest. So let's get into the first beginner's mistake. And all of these mistakes are kind of no duh uh, mistakes. You might be thinking, yeah, of course. So here's the first one. The goal here is to produce a roaring bonfire that's smokeless, right, on a solo stove. Well, the first one is not emptying out your ash. And that's so straightforward, but whenever you don't empty out your ash in your solo stove, it's going to just block all the potential of airflow getting through, and you want to be able to do that. And there's a few ways that you can dump your ash in a solo stove. The first one is taking it out and rolling it and dumping your ash after it's cold. Uh, the other way is using a ash vacuum cleaner, uh, which I will show you. That's typically what I do, especially now that I have the surround. Instead of having to carry it out, although if you have the solo stove handle, you'd be able to easily remove it from your surround and dump and roll it that way. But I also use my shop vac ash uh, cleaner. Makes it super easy. Now, if you have the pellet adapter, which I do in right now, I literally just have to take that out, dump it, and I'm good. I can check to see if there's any remaining debris underneath that for some reason. But that's the first mistake I see because we don't want to cause any potential of having not any good airflow from the bottom up. The second beginner's mistake I see is loading your solo stove with too much firewood. And this is something I did in the beginning. I just would throw so much firewood in there above the holes and you've got holes on the bottom and then holes on the top. This is to help produce what they call the secondary burn. Uh, once you light it and it's burning hot, it's getting that great airflow and then it's just continuing to rotate like this, the, the heat. But whenever you start with too much charcoal, you're going to choke out the fire. You're going to be a way more smoky in the beginning. Uh, and then you're just not going to get to that secondary hot, uh, hot burn as quickly. And you're going to be like, man, what mistake did I make? So that's the mistake is I would start small with kindling wood, whatever you want it, twigs, just whatever you want to use to get it started, throw that in the bottom, light it up. Once you see it's lit, then add your, your wood. And I'll show you here on the screen, but I like to take like regular killing dried firewood and put them kind of in a log shape, gets great airflow, but then it'll just kind of light from the bottom up and then it'll just start burning. And then from there, once you see that the fire is lit, you can add one log or two at a time just to keep the fire going. So I just want to make note that yes, this is a smokeless fire pit, uh, but every initial burn is going to have a little smoke. Come on, like that's just, common sense, right? But once we get through the initial burn, then we get into that secondary uh, burn and then have a smokeless fire pit. So that's kind of the big idea of the solo stove. So I want to make mention, start with smaller fire with twigs, then add your logs and then we'll get going and light your fire that way. I also like to use fire starters or a fire torch. Uh, that gets it really going fast under 60 seconds with the fire torch. I use the grill blazer grill torch, makes it super easy to light. So I'll put this in, we'll start building a fire as we go, as we get into the next beginner mistake. The third beginning mistake I see is using the wrong type of firewood. You wanna use hardwood and not softwood. So oftentimes people just take anything that they see off the side of the road, or the back of their house, depending on where they live, if it's softwood, if it's got pines, if it's got needles, and they just throw it in there. And if it's a softwood, it's gonna just produce a horrible uh, smoky uh, smokiness to it. It's also, if you burn wet wood, it's not gonna produce um, and burn well. Uh, it's gonna be a bad fire. So if you use hardwood and it's been pre-seasoned and all that kind of stuff, 
specifically kill and dried firewood anywhere you can get an ace or home depot lowe's or wherever your hardware store is that's going to help you produce a clean burning fire so the mistake is using the wrong type of hardwood it seems obvious but sometimes we go for convenience in our backyard and just throw things in there and it's not going to burn well it's going to burn fast and it's going to burn bad and smoky and not good smoke so we want a clean burn so use hardwood the fourth beginner mistake on a solo stove and this is specific to solo stove is having your fire ring upside down there's a purpose for this because you got the secondary burn you get the holes in the bottom you get the holes on the top and then this is just producing that aerodynamics helping get the fire to go upward like this and so it's really straight uh simple and easy oftentimes i see people having it the opposite way thinking oh it fits perfectly uh and that's the correct way of doing it a friend of mine bought one this year um, from uh, you know through my connections and i he sent me a picture and didn't say anything at first he had it upside down i was like oh man you got to have that the other way because it's going to help produce a clean fire and just kind of build off of those secondary holes and all the science behind the solo stove and this type of fire pit so if you like it regardless if you like that tip or not it's just simple and straightforward turn it around it's going to be designed just the way it was and have a really great uh, burning fire just like that. The last beginner mistake I see is not stoking your fire and adding additional firewood at the right time. Straightforward, simple, kind of a no duh, but it's one of the reasons why I love some of these tools. This gets new firewood or if you need to get a uh, move a piece in the fire pit this way. Uh, this is your stoker and this allows you to simply come over here now i've got a good burn here i don't really need to do too much um, but from the bottom i want to see how i'm doing spread some of the wood out once it starts ashing over i might stoke the fire kind of towards the end of uh, the cook here or the fire pit then i'm going to stoke it make sure the fire is continuing to go and then also you want to just kind of keep an eye on the fire and know when to add firewood. So as I'm, depending on how long you wanna be out here, um, we'll simply, um, you know, just add a piece of wood as we see the fire slowly die down towards that maybe that second tier of firewood. Then I'll add one more log just to keep going. Stick around and I have a bonus for you. The bonus mistake and really the tip I see is in regards to how you put out your fire. It's the end of the day and you're ready to put this thing out the thing you don't want to do, and I see it and hear about it in blogs and different posts, is putting water on your fire pit. Tossing water in there is just going to make it uh, a lot worse, messier, and just purely the wrong way to do it. I remember whenever we first got a solo stove, I didn't know what I didn't know. And the, had this out in the driveway during, I think, Halloween. We had a roaring fire. I mean, it was awesome. And we were done for the evening, but the fire was going. And I remember my wife going, like, just throw water on it. And I was like, no, like, that's the worst thing you could do. Unfortunately, you just got to let it burn out. Like, that's the right way to do it is just plan ahead and let this burn out. But once you get to embers and then you're ready to go, then at that point, you can use this top, which I would highly recommend, and just put it on top when you're done. Now, don't put this on whenever it's a roaring fire, but I would say once you get to that last layer and embers are going, uh, is all you got left, then you can put this on and you've got uh, a fire that's out, come out an hour later, it's gonna be cold to the touch and you're set to go. All right, friends, thank you for watching. And if you found value in this video, I hope that you subscribe to the channel and check out all the different solo stove playlists and all the other grills that might interest you as well. I'll be doing a giveaway once we hit 10,000 subscribers. So help me share uh, this video and this channel with others. Because once we do, we'll give away a solo stove and a few other things. And also, I have a new barbecue rub I would love for you to check out. Put it a, this, a link in the description for you to check out. It's Sweet Red Dirt and Dust Bowl. And hopefully a third rub coming soon in a barbecue sauce. So all barbecue and outdoor grilling and fun uh, activities that you want to learn more about, check out the channel. Thanks for watching. From my backyard to yours, less hate, more love. Good barbecue.